Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to get into some untamed booster packs. We're going to open five booster packs together, and there's some really great cards in here. Uh, this was from a Splinterlands TV live event, so if you want to be present when I do this sort of thing live, ask your questions and have them answered right then and there. Come hang out Friday nights from 9 to 11 Pacific Standard Time on Friday nights. Okay guys, thanks for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless. Five untamed packs. I'm going to say it cost me about 100 bucks. And that doesn't even seem like that much money to be honest. Like, cause I, the untamed, the beta packs I opened were probably worth, you know, 50 bucks each. So let's go ahead and get one. I'm going to open them all. Unless we just, if one of them like blows me away with like a legendary gold foil, like that'll be, that might be the, where we just stop because we get, we need to talk about that. I'm actually nervous right now. Like as I, I don't have, I'm, not, I'm looking at this and I want to quickly grab my cursor and put it over top of these, these cards. And, and I want to see that glow and I want to look for that gold glow, which is going to indicate a new legendary monster card. That would be crazy awesome if there was somehow a kitty in here after having just sold my kitty. But let's be realistic. I'm not likely to get that. And probably all I'm going to get is a blue card, which is a rare. So we'll see. But man, the the idea that it could be is very fun. And for 20 bucks after, you know what I mean? Like, it's like every now and then, you know, you go play poker with your friends and it's just you and your buddies. And you throw it on 10 or 20 bucks. That's what I feel like this is. Come on now. Let's check it out. Okay. Regular. Oh my goodness. I just want to see like a yellow glow so badly, so badly. Come on, please. Okay, that's a rare. I thought it was a, I thought it was a, for a second, I thought it was an epic. Now this could be my only rare. It's possible this is it. And the other one's a common too. Let's see. Let's, yeah. Okay. So we got four commons on this one. Now let's get them. Let's see, what, see what we see. I want to check out the prices on this herbalist. Um, we're going to untamed. Mm. Herbalist is a card I like. Only a only ten uh only a buck for BCX. I find this card to be very helpful. It has triage and cleanse in equalizer rule sets. This is a very effective card, and it's archery, which means it works well with Sloan for two mana. It's doing th two damage at the highest um levels. Throw in a Sloan buff there. You're giving three damage for two. Plus a triage heal. This is an excellent card, guys. If you don't have it, and if you use a lot of white, I think this is a card. This is a card you should be looking at, especially for you know, forty cents per BCX. You get. You're gonna want. You'd want this one because you'd want to get up to the triage. I'd argue it. You. I'd argue you're gonna want the full the full meal deal. But um, and look at this. This is like a flip opportunity. 40 cents for this 40 BCX and you could buy it for 40 cents and you can immediately relist it. I would argue for 50 cents. Mm, the profit's not there. The margin's not there. You know, maybe you buy it for 40 and list it for 80 and just wait and see what happens. That might, might take a month to sell, but you could double your money possibly. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, Cave Slug is an amazing card. It has slow at the higher levels. It has a high up damage output. It has scavenge and opportunity. It is five mana for a lot of damage and a potential tank because of the scavenge it offers. I don't know if it's expensive. Probably isn't. Cave Slug, only 40 cents per. It's a really good card. Slow scavenge opportunity. Look at four damage at the higher levels. I really like this card. The slow to me is really being able to white is not the fastest team. So then being able to slow your enemy can be very helpful. Okay, let's keep going. No sniping narwhal. I used to hate this card, but um, snipe can be an interesting play in and of itself. I, I wouldn't recommend this card though. It isn't one that I often play but it can be powerful failed summoner is an excellent card this is in my opinion like almost a must-have card um 
Quickly check the number on the failed summoner. The failed summoner is very reasonable for two bucks a BCX because of how powerful it is, but you need 400 copies of them. And so you're, you're talking, like I would argue, you know, this is key. That demoralize is super important. Plus seven hit points there. Um, there's magic reflect. That's one of the possible counters, right? For your, um, for the, for the new fire summoner. And there's a ton of magic reflect on the green team. There's also a ton of amplify damage. So I could really see failed summoner being yet still more important because of the new, um, Jassic summoner coming into the game. This is a card that I think is expensive, but could go up again. Interestingly. Okay. And then let's see a nice rare gold foil. Luminous Eagle is a card I've never really fully appreciated. I would describe it as kind of whatever. I like that it attacks from the second position, of course. Um, and it's flyer, but I mean, it's got relatively low hit points. It doesn't do a, like the damage is significant, but I don't know, like knockout, knockout certainly helps it and there are some stunners on the white team but there are they are few and far between like you need to have the, the thunderbird is pretty much your main option unless you bring in like a soul oh no that's the if you bring in like alternatives that are maybe neutral uh or something but the thunderbird is it great card by the way okay let's keep going Okay. Oh, right there. That's nice. Rare right away. Come on. Two rares. Come on. Okay, two rares. Somehow it was like more lucky to just quickly touch them with the with the cursor. Two rares. That's good. So that first pack probably was worth like eight or ten bucks. Uh, it was probably closer to eight. No, no. That it was it was probably closer to ten because the luminous, the failed summoner. I think we had three cards worth two bucks and then the other ones, no, nah, probably eight bucks. So eight bucks and it cost me 20 bucks. I think we got two rares here. So this could be interesting. Seaweed's a great card. This is a card I have max copy of, but I don't have it on my main account or mana too. Feasting seaweed feast and only a buck. Another flip opportunity, buy it for 55 cents, sell it for 80 cents. You might need to sit on it for a bit, but you know, you're, you're turning, you could turn 23 bucks into 40 bucks, maybe. Opportunity scavenge. I love that combination. Scavenge is so powerful in many rule sets in many moments. So strong, strong card. And for that low man, the, the little league battles too. Love it. I'd love to see some gold foils here. Undead Badger is an exceptional sneak attack monster with that two mana, two mana cost. Um, I have a max copy of this, but I, um, again, it's on one of my alts. I have about five million, six million power, and only two million on my main account. And so, I've got a lot of great cards in different places. But like, look at this: for two mana, you drop in three melee, and it's very easy. There's, there's at least. There's one exceptional um, monster on the death team that gives Inspire. It's Shadowy Presence. Gives you plus one hit point, plus one melee. Look at the speed too. For two mana, six speed, four hit points, three damage. It's so ridiculously fast and powerful. If you're able to bring any sort of uh, positive attributes to this thing from a summoner, maybe a new legendary death summoner that brings for the first time ever positive help to the death team. The summoners on the death team always nerf your opponent. 
And that's why most of their monsters have these like significant um, stats. Like for two mana, you're getting three melee, you're getting six speed, and you're getting four hit points. If you if you added those numbers up and said to yourself, look, four points, six points, 13 points for two mana, I promise you that's gonna be among the most points you're gonna get from a two mana monster in the game. And and you you might say like, well, speed's like six speed is great, but it's like it's not. You wouldn't maybe call every speed a point if you're calling the melee damage output up one point but it's it's one way to think about the the power um the power creep of a variety of cards that are maybe in some context totally incomparable an archer from a melee a magic from a opportunity um they're totally different in many respects but then you count the points you weigh it against the mana so undead is definitely a high performer in that aspect and serpentine spy also this card is exceptional you guys know it is Serp. serpentine spy two dollars and forty cents this card is amazing i don't even have a max level copy of this because it got kind of expensive by the time i was pulling the trigger on it this was one people loved early on. Three mana and four damage. This is where I have it, level eight, I think. For, and this is where it gets kind of crazy. Like, you, you, if you, you know, you can come in and you can buy this for $172, and you're going to get a good deal, 78 cents per BCX, and you're going to unlock four melee, six speed, two hit points. It gets a lot better at the top 10, uh, at the top point, because you get one more hit point which could maybe save the day you also get poison which can be a real game changer but you're talking about essentially doubling your cost to the card because you go from 220 bcx to 400 and so that's always something you need to think through when you're building your deck thinking like yeah I, you know obviously i would love it personally i would love this thing at max level but if you get it here you might just stop because the cost differential can really put a damper on your plans. Yeah, let's get these rares. Come on, gold foil. Eld is amazing. Serpent of Eld. Come on, gold foil. Mustang. I, I, I've got my unicorn Mustang for sale on the marketplace right now. I have a max level one. This card's amazing, but I was trying to sell it for a few hundred bucks, just in part to pay for Vegas. But now that I've sold Kitty, I guess I don't have to. Serpent of Eld. Let's see. Serpent of Eld. The three dollar card. So this this pack probably paid for uh better than half of its value, anyways. The Serpent of Eld is three dollars and forty cents. This card to me, I've always had it max level, and I love it. It's and I think it's amazing in the right context, but I actually think the right context isn't kind of a a, a first position tank even though it is a first position tank like you know this is built to be a first position tank it's just that when magic comes hot on this thing you're just so annoyed because it just kills you so quick and i've always i've always been annoyed by that so i like this card but i just don't often use it and then mustang let's see what's that one worth probably two bucks mustang's one of those cards that's Look at that, seven bucks. It's one of those cards that's actually really expensive for one BCX because it's got the void and everybody needs a gold foil version. And it happens to be um very, very common at like lower level matches. That 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 void. And three damage. This is such an amazing card for one BCX. And it gets even better too at these high levels, but I mean again, it's it's so good for one BCX. Okay, let's keep going. We've got 20 minutes left. I mean that deck might have been might have paid for itself. Mustang was seven, the Eld was three fifty. Um, you know, it was in the neighborhood of fifteen or seventeen bucks probably. Oh epic. Epic. Come on. Oh, come. Epic though, that's huge. That's awesome. Tartesian fighter. Um, I'm expecting like this is a card I don't really like. Short. 
shield and repair make it interesting? But unless equalizer or unless all monsters have void armor because of weak magic, I just don't know. Like these hit points are too low. That's the problem. Magic will kill this thing rapidly. So I don't love it. And I'm not surprised it's relatively inexpensive. Yep. I have it though. I have a max copy already. There's that seaweed again. Again, a strong card. Magma Troll. I like this card a lot. This is a card that I don't think most people use, but I like it. Magma Troll. Let's quickly have a peek over here. Fire. Fifty-seven percent win rate on the Magma Troll at Diamond. Only fourteen battles, but I really like it. So four mana means it plays at the little league. Look at the four damage, the four speed, the affliction, the low hit points is a problem, but equalizer makes it work. Um also if you put a proper tank in the first position, um, you know, th this this softness is probably not so problematic. Or or you you can put armor on the team with like a protect or you in a low mana match where little league is in effect the speed of your team can be all you need so i'll do like a i'll do like a melee only team i forget the card i put in the first position but you put like somebody like the exploding rats in the first position and then this thing and 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 then you get serpentine spy um and i like to see a team that's fast and can do uh knockout damage on the there's uh, there's knockout damage too um i forget what that one's called but for low mana melee i really like the magma troll boatman's amazing it has repair at the higher levels i don't know if it's kind of expensive but boat no inexpensive but it's really helpful with with your Grandmaster Wraith plays and with some of the, um, for instance, the taunt stuff that we were talking about earlier, is that repair and the shatter. So if your opponent is taunting and your opponent has huge armor, you're going to shatter all of it. Plus, if you're taunting and um, they shatter, you're going to go ahead and repair. So this card is actually really, really pivotal for the taunt kind of the growing taunt play with the shield bearer uh, on the white team lately. Okay, and last but not least, this nice epic, juicy epic gold foil, let's hope. Come on, let's see a gold foil. Oh, Darkest Mage is great though. This is one of my favorite um, magic monster cards. And again, another indication of how, how deadly death can be for a low mana match and the amount of points it gets. Check this thing out. $5 card. And at the highest levels, you're getting two damage out sorry two damage output three speed and four hit points plus the rust and this is really key because if your opponent is using magic reflect or void armor this rust is really really i think super important i like to do double rust um in many instances especially like there's there's rule sets where everyone gets two armor rust just goes ahead and kind of deletes your opponent's necessary armor like you know they're gonna have armor so you can just you can in those contexts use rust to counter that essentially i i really really like darkest mage it's an exceptional card affliction is so important and anytime you get two damage for two mana it's a great card okay two more packs like i'd, I'd really love to see a legendary card here or a crazy gold foil try and pay for a bit of the so far i'd say we are we are underwater on these packs by probably half the value so we spent 20 bucks a pack maybe we've got we've recouped 10 bucks per pack regular 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 blue okay this is not the oh the cobalt bruiser that's the other one i was talking about with the fire team it's a low mana high melee quick speed it's only two speed at this but at the higher levels i think it's four or five speed it has knockout or sorry yeah knockout which means it doubles its damage if your opponent is stunned 
And so you can you can contrive a situation where this thing is nasty with that magma troll in the second spot in the little league play. Ooh, Orc Sergeant's really, really good. Narwhal, again, whatever. Giant Scorpion, in my opinion, whatever. Um, I don't see anybody play the Giant Scorpion. Like, ever. Do you guys ever see that card? 18 cents. Yeesh. This is a... This is just... I don't know, man. Like, the Thorns is nice, right? It's always nice to have Thorns. Poison's nice. I can see this being really helpful in a in a in a super niche melee from any position where you could stick it in the back and take advantage of thorns and the poison. It's got good amount of damage, I guess. For sixty bucks, I'd say it's it's probably worth sixty bucks, especially since it's an untamed card, meaning it's playable in the modern, and it would give you a different look that not everybody would have. But I mean. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't think I've ever, I, I can't remember the last time I played against it. Let's put it that way. I gotta find it. Giant Scorpion, 33% win rate, six battles, six at diamond, four at gold, 18 at silver, 28 at bronze, 600 total battles, but that includes probably tons of them at novice, tons of plays at novice. Okay, we got about 12 minutes left. Let's see, come on, gold foil, rare gold foil. Rare. Nope. Goblin Chariot's a strong card though. Fast, neutral, archery damage goes well with Sloan. I bet I bet it's a kind of expensive card. Probably, I'm guessing five bucks. Goblin. Oh, buck fifty. Wow. If you use Sloan, this is a card to strongly consider because it's got decent speed and. It's got piercing and it does a fair amount of damage at silver, at gold, at diamond. It gets really serious. This is an excellent card, and because it's neutral, can fit right in with your with your Sloans. Okay, we got one more pack. Hopefully, we save the best for last here. Come on, guys. Come on. Oh. Epic, at least. Okay. No legendaries. But an epic could be gold foil. And if it was, I haven't got any gold foils. If it was, we're talking some serious bucks. 50... 50 is a starter and they get up to 100 and ish some amazing cards actually wow come on now i would love to see a war chain or a medica oh medica is so good gorlodon forgot about him hmm phyrexia is an amazing card it's got inspire so many good cards. Who knows? Let's see what we got. Slime ball, so helpful and powerful at higher levels. Once it gets the uh, the the reduction in your enemy's hit points. So the redemption. Yeah, I really like this card. I use it all the time, but it's very, it is niche. And come on, let's finish strong. We've got 10 minutes left. Mitica, only level one, but that's a big, big card. That's a, that's an epic. I'm glad to see. That's a strong, strong card. Mitica, where are you at? Only six bucks. But again, like with the, um, with the Mustang, one BCX is actually really helpful with this card. And I wouldn't have bought it if it didn't get this card, but I'm happy to have it. And I will probably keep it for years, I would think. I, I have no interest in selling it for six bucks, um, but I definitely, definitely, definitely would put it on one of my alt accounts and give them that significant four archery damage, five speed. This card's amazing at level one. 
Um, it gets better and better and better, but it's amazing at level one. So that was fun. Um, and let's see, we got to open a few chaos packs. Let's see, 20. I'd, I'd open two hundred, but I don't have enough potions. Oh man. Then I'll check him. I'm going to do f this much faster. I just want to use up some more of these potions. And then, oh, right off the gate. Right off the gate. Another legendary would be cool. I don't. Oh, there it is. And that's a good one, too. Oh, and some nice gold foil. Just the one gold foil. It's a good little 20 pack open right there. Love it. The Adelaide Brightwing is so strong with that repair. So strong. Dampier Stalker, one of my favorite rares from the death team. I, 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 you know, at the higher levels. Like it's too slow at the lower levels, but that that true strike um, and the damage output capable there, very, very helpful. Goblin Psychic, amazing. Um, I feel like I've talked about these cards to death, but uh, some great cards in there. Okay. And so I'm going to check them in the chat, see what you guys are chatting about, what you think about those cards. And Com a crazy kamikaze says scorpion is a little league back to basics. Yeah, niche. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, little league, and I wouldn't say back to basics. I'd almost want it in little league and melee from any position, which happens sometimes. And that would be an amazing niche for that card because it has, remember it has, um, or it had poison at the higher levels where I would be playing it. And poison is so helpful and three damage and a good amount of hit points at, for like little league six and three, nine hit points. And you could put it in the sneak position, giving it like taking full advantage of the thorns. So I love it in a little league um, melee from any position situation. But, and so I actually think for 60 bucks or whatever it is, like that's actually really interesting. Um, but again, what could you do with 60 bucks? And 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 would that, would your, would your other options move the needle in a bigger way? That's always gotta be the question you ask when you look at a card. Hmm. Dishonesty, good morning to you too. Popping on Thames, you know it, buddy. Hold my card says, hey. Carlo, Carlo, let's go. Um, Butters, come on, 12, let's go with the gold. Oh, man, that would have been so nice. Even if that, if that, oh, if that Mitica Headhunter was a goldie, that would have been wild. Yeah, I mean, it's a, good, it's a good set of pulls. I mean, it was, well, let's have a peek. I think I probably claimed back half of the value that I put into that. We go, I'm not sure I can do this, but let's have a peek. Infidel, more, analyze packs. This is Chaos Legion, and you, yeah, you can't look at Untamed. I don't think. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. So go over here, go floor. So look, the first pack was worth $3.90. Second pack, $8. So call it 12 bucks so far. Third pack, four bucks. So we're 16 bucks. Fourth pack, a buck 60. That was a dud. But the Orc Sergeant I really like, actually. I, I really like the Orc Sergeant. I really like the Cobalt Bruiser. I really like the Goblin Chariot, but still the value wise. So I lost track though. So four bucks, 12 bucks, 16 bucks. Mm, I'm going to call it 18 bucks. And then Mitica with another seven, 25 bucks, $25. And those packs um, were not cheap. I mean, that was not financially worth it. But the thing about that, right, is like, well, what if, look, I bought those five for 38 hive each or call it 
you know, 20 bucks per pack. Um, and I mean, you know, there's some hundred dollar cards out there. There's some amazing summoners out there. Like you just go in, you know, it's not likely that you're going to drop some of these untamed, uh, you know, this is possible in those packs. This is possible. And so every now and then it's kind of fun to do. Okay, we got about 12 seconds left. So thank you guys again for all of your time and attention. I really appreciate it. It's worth something. So thank you for spending it with me. Hope you have an amazing night. God bless.